In 2010, you petitioned the USDA to keep frozen pizzas in school lunches, therefore allowing for the sauce to be counted as a vegetable in order to support the business of a Minnesota for frozen foods company. Amid the obesity epidemic that has plagued this country for decades, to what extent do you believe that the financial interests of corporations in your home state should outweigh the health of America's next generation? Okay, well, that's a big question. Uh, thank you. First of all, I made clear in a New York Times article a few years later when I was asked about that, that it was just a letter that I had sent. Um, we were in the middle of the downturn, and it was a little more, I would say, complex in her terms of the language, but it's a fair criticism. And so I said I regretted sending that letter. It was about uh, trying to keep a company afloat in a really small town uh, that employed a bunch of people. But I think that nutrition is paramount for this country, and that's why way before I was running for president, I said that that was a mistake, all right? So let's talk about the bigger issue, which is nutrition. Um, and that is that we need to have healthier foods in kids' lunches. We need to have healthier foods um, available to people no matter how much money they have. And that's why, as a member of the Agriculture Committee and one of the few uh, members of that committee uh, that's running for president right now, I have been a major advocate for better school lunches, more nutritious school lunches. I actually had a bill also for preschool school lunches to make sure uh, that those are more nutritious as well. Uh, what does that mean in the context of frozen that means pizza? This will be unpopular like, with this no, crowd. He, they think frozen pizza is a food group <laughs> okay. here. But do you think yeah. it should be allowed in school lunches? Uh, it is. It is. I'm not sure what the status of it is right now. If this was about how it was counted, like well, was it you, counted as a vegetable? No, I didn't think that frozen pizza with uh, with tomato sauce on it. I do not believe should be counted as a vegetable. Let me make that clear. But no, could I, I, I get talk it. about. But should it be in lunches? It, I, I, I think that it is sometimes in lunches. I'm not, I'm just, I want to know what but the USDA be. says, as long as you have other things with it, right? As long as you have real vegetables with it, and as long as you have other things with it. And I'm looking at my daughter right now. Uh, by the way, she is here, she is 23, and please be nice to her, because how would you feel if it was your mom up here being asked <laughs> about uh, pizza? Calling um, her out in front of yeah, everybody like there that. There she is, exactly, that exactly. Uh, but I have seen, um, she went to a school actually um, that's a little different than your school. And uh, her school was, I think in high school, it was in middle school, was something like 90% free and reduced lunch, uh, maybe even a little higher than that. And that was a school in Minneapolis that she went for several years. And I got to be in the lunchroom and saw what it was like for these kids uh, that couldn't afford lunch. Uh, they were all, I think everyone in her class at one point was an immigrant except her. Um, and there were kids in the lunchrooms that were trying to get stuff, but then they would get a donut and eat that instead. Um, a lot of the kids were getting stuff out of the vending machines to bring home for dinner. That's happening right now in America. And I know because my daughter only went to public schools, and for a number of years she went to public schools uh, that were the vast majority were free and reduced lunch. So you ask me where this comes from and why I brought it up, because I've lived it. I've lived it, and I know how important it is for these kids. All right, so let's talk more about education. Our next question is from Adriana Fernandez. Uh, she's a sophomore at St. Anselm College and a U.S. citizen, originally from Nicaragua. Adriana. Um, hello, Senator. Hello. Uh, my question is, our current secretary, secretary of Education is attempting to slash funding from special needs programs. What are your ideas regarding the federal responsibility to the education system? Sure. Well, thank you so much. And uh, let's mention the name of that education secretary is Betsy DeVos, OK? Someone that I um, strongly opposed and um, I just think shouldn't be in her job. And so it is no surprise to me. Uh, it is. No surprise to me that these things keep happening. And she not only has tried to defund special education, but she also uh, tried to get rid of the Special Olympics funding, if you watched any of this. And I think we noted that literally just a few trips back to Miralago and back with the president would have actually funded the Special Olympics funding. That is a true statistic. So I think our job in government is to represent everyone. And it is particularly to represent people that maybe can't write a check themselves, right? Or maybe can't even write themselves. 
or maybe need help. Maybe they're in a wheelchair. Maybe they have uh, physical disabilities. Maybe they have mental disabilities. But our job is to stand by them. I remember being in a small town parade in Minnesota a few years ago, and a mom was pushing a baby carriage, and she pointed at her toddler, and she said, this is my boy. He's only three years old, and he has Down syndrome. This is what a pre-existing condition looks like. And that was the moment that I thought to myself, OK, what we've been saying out here about pre-existing conditions, finally people know what it means. It means things like disabilities. Uh, it means things like if you're a victim of domestic violence. It means things like you have diabetes, or you have cancer, or your mom had a certain disease. So we not only need to stand up when it comes to disability funding, including education funding with IDEA, and you probably know what I'm talking about here, but it is the federal government putting mandates on the states and that not putting the money with it. But we also need to stand up when it comes to health care for people with disabilities. And when you check these things off, what this administration has done, they want to get rid of the Affordable Care Act and those protections. That hurts the disability community. They want to reduce the funding for special ed and for, um, for uh, the Olympics, which they then had a reverse on because there was such a public outcry. That hurts people with disabilities. And they haven't done anything to fund education for people with disabilities. So I give them, since you're all students, an F. <laughs> all right, you mentioned earlier, Senator, it's Earth Day. Uh, mm -hmm. On that issue of climate, I want to bring in Madeline Woods, a senior at Harvard from Colorado. She was raised on a wolf sanctuary with environmentalists okay. and conservationists. <laughs> okay, that is like super unique. So, um, <laughs> hello, Madeline, hello. and congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't have much choice in it, but thank you. It was a great childhood. Mm -hmm. um, so, speaking of the climate, you backed Alexandria Ocasio Cortez's Green New Deal. Now, while I was raised on a wolf sanctuary, I actually come from a very rural, isolated town where people criticized the Green New Deal and found it laughable that they were being told how to care for their environment by people from large cities. So I know you have a lot of rural voters. Um, how do you plan to include rural communities in the discussion on climate change? OK, that is really a great question. Thanks. So it's Earth Day. And for too long, we have been debating whether climate change is happening. Uh, my favorite moment of this, when John Oliver uh, finally decided to put 100 scientists on his stage in white coats. 99 of them were on one side, and one was on the other. Uh, to show that the scientific community says it's happening. And I think what's important, as you look at the goals in the Green New Deal, and no one thinks we're going to dot every I and cross every T in a short period of time, but we need those goals. We need, as a nation, to come behind goals. We need the energy of young people and people that really want to move on climate change. So this is what I say to my rural voters. I say, look at what's in front of you. Because for too long, we've been talking about it, I think, of more of a coastal issue, which is true. Rising sea levels, you just saw the Greenland ice sheet again was in the news today, hurricanes. But let's talk about it from the middle of the country where we need the political support. And I personally think someone from the heartland could do a pretty good job of that. What do we see in front of us? This is what we see. Floods all over Iowa, Nebraska, and Missouri. This is important, so I'm going to finish this. Uh, we have got, I feel you creeping over my shoulder. I don't know. Not in a Trumpian manner. Yes, good. Uh, just like you're there and, and like, <laughs> and this is like really, really important. So this woman in Iowa, uh, Fran, she is literally standing with me with binoculars on, looking at her house, which is submerged under water. And she says to me, this is where I live with my husband and my two four-year-olds. And I said, well, is the river right there? Because it was like, she says, no, the river is two and a half miles away. Ours is a house that's over a century old. There's still horse hair in the plaster. But this time, for the first time, the water came in to my house. That's climate change. Or you look at the wildfires in Colorado or Arizona, or you think of that dad in Northern California outside of paradise who's driving his little girl in the car with their house presumably burning behind them, and the flames are lapping over their car, and he's singing to her, singing to her to calm her down. 
climate change isn't happening 100 years from now. It's happening right now. And that's why, as your president, on day one, I would get us back into the International Climate Change Agreement. All right? That's day one. On day two, on day two and day three, I would bring back the clean power rules that the Obama administration worked out that will make a big dent in this. I would bring back, I would bring back the gas mileage standards that they just left and said, oh, sorry, I know you car companies are ready to do it, but guess what? You don't have to. That's what they did. And I would propose sweeping legislation for green buildings and new ideas. And we need to do this because guess what? It's you guys, not me. It's my daughter and you guys that are gonna be inheriting this earth, and that's why we need you on the front line.